Three hot, three not. This is a series that comes off of a PLE and or a very special Raw slash SmackDown slash whatever the case may be. And we talk about who's the hottest wrestlers and or talent coming out of the PLE and who are the coldest, who are not the hottest. The first one is a tie between Drew and Punk. The reason why they get to go in as a tie, because without one, there is no other. They are nuclear red hot feud right now their feud more important than any title match i would definitely rather see drew versus punk over cody versus solo over damian versus seth although the seth damian one does intrigue me a little but no this match so hot coming out of clash at the castle where cm punk completely embarrassed drew mcintyre and then drew mcintyre on raw we want to hear what he has to say clamoring for what he has to say and then just says i quit i'm out i'm done I love it. I love it. Make us wait even more. This is such a good feud. Drew McIntyre is justified in everything he said. Every single thing he has said, he is justified and even right. Very much like Bret Hart before he started hating America. Just right before. But the way he says it makes us want to hate him. And then CM Punk is just fueling that fire. I have not seen a feud to this level of hatred in a very long time. And it is great. I am loving it. Absolutely loving it. And they are just playing their parts perfect to the T and the crazy thing is this feud is all done while both were injured where one is injured this week on Smackdown CM Punk is coming to Chicago to probably announce that he's clear sidebar I don't like that because it's Smackdown and not Raw and this will be the first instance where the draft the rule is being bent now I know we've had other people but there were explanations the King of the Ring opponents the women's tag team opponents because that can go on both brands but this one CM Punk has no business this being in SmackDown other than the fact that it's Chicago, which I get, but storyline-wise doesn't make sense. I hope they do make it make sense, but I think what's going to happen is Drew's going to come out, says he didn't really quit after all, and totally embarrass Punk in front of Chicago, just like Punk embarrassed him in front of Scotland, and that's great. And how amazing was the CM Punk swerve at Castle? He dresses up like a referee, one, two, and then he doesn't count. He goes like this, which is a homage to Drew McIntyre's shirt that does this to CM Punk's WrestleMania dreams. These two together, red, scorching, hot. Who is not... Cody Rhodes, I'm sorry to say this, I am a Cody crybaby, but Cody Rhodes coming out of that PLE just seems not hot at all. He has AJ Styles handcuffed, ring stairs above his head, makes AJ quit, and then he hits him with it anyways. And what are the consequences? None. AJ's going to be back in a couple months. It's like, oh, so what is the point of quitting? What is all this? It's just... I don't know. The feud going in was good, where he faked his retirement, AJ Styles, but the feud going out, Cody's just kind of looking a little, uh, I don't know, vanilla, maybe? Weak? I don't know. Not weak, but just like, eh, meh. He's looking meh. And then we see the next feud is him and Solo Sokoa. At first, I was like, ooh, this is interesting. And then he's getting beat up. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then Randy Orton KO come out. I would put the bloodline in the ice cold position. But the fact that they got a title shot, they are jumping up to lukewarm. But for Cody, he's fighting lukewarm people. He's cold. Cody's title reign right now is cold. I'm not saying take the belt off him. But I am saying we got to heat things up. I think it's going to heat up at SummerSlam. And I bet, I bet the fact that Randy Orton came out and helped. This will set up Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes. But right now, based off of what's happening, I got to put Cody in the cold position. Let's jump back to who's hot. Braun Breaker. Super hot. Braun Breaker is just eating people alive. He wasn't on the PLE, but on the Raws, he's just destroying jobber after jobber. Then he moved up and he completely eviscerated Ricochet. And now he has beat Sheamus. Well, he didn't really beat him, but he kind of beat him. He destroyed him. And he's going after the IC title right now. I am really reminiscent of a young Brock Lesnar. Not the Brock that came back for Extreme Rules with John Cena. I'm talking the next big thing. Brock Lesnar and I really am seeing that and I think Braun Breaker is just about to go on a tear. They fumbled him on SmackDown. Great job bringing him to Raw and just making him a beast. This is how you use him. He is the future. I see it. He's red hot. Who's not? Sheamus. We just talked about how he got beat up by Braun Breaker. He also got beat up by Ludwig Kaiser. And in fact, ever since he's come back, the best thing about his comeback is when Drew McIntyre cooked him on the mic saying burger after burger. I'm sorry, Sheamus. It sucks. However, 
This is how a veteran should act in putting over talent when they're at the tail end of their career. So if Sheamus is kind of at the tail end of his career, this is good. But at the same time, I just got to call it like I see it. He is ice cold right now because he's doing nothing but losing or getting made fun of. He can kind of laugh. He can go with the joke. He can roll with the punches, which I do respect. But at the end of the day, he's not doing anything to advance his career, and that makes him cold. Let's go back to hot, and that will be Damian Priest. Damian Priest. I did not see this one coming at all. Damian Priest, I figure, was a transitional champion. However, he's making the most of it. He really is making the most of it. He did win. The thing that made his win special at Clash at the Castle is the fact that he really got injured. That ring rope situation, he was supposed to springboard into a plancha off the top rope and he got caught in it. It was very scary. Could have been injured, could have been worse. He's a tall dude and he fell, he could have hit his head. A lot of things could have happened. Drew McIntyre also, pro. That's how you keep a match going and keep it in the confines of the story. They were great. They made it happen. Drew, a lot of props to Drew on that. But back to Damien. Damien sold the leg injury throughout the entire match, which was great because we didn't know. We were all like, is he really hurt or is he not? He was doing one-legged spin kicks, one-legged razor edges. Really, really powerful stuff. And thankfully, he is alright and he dodged a bullet. But the fact of the matter is, in that moment, we're all worried about his his leg because he keeps selling it. Great job, Damien. This is how you do it. This is how you maximize your minutes. You might be a transitional champion. You might get some big victories, but this is how you make sure you come back to being champion. Transitional the first time, handpicked the second time. So I really think Damian Priest came out of this looking great. The only thing holding him back right now is Judgment Day. I really feel that Judgment Day is kind of holding them back because they're all kind of like Goofy Judgment Day get together, their IQ drops, and it's making Damian Priest look like he's just babysitting, or he's just like, oh, I'm just surrounded by a bunch of idiots, and he just needs to get away from that. We need a more serious Damian Priest right now. Judgment Day without Rhea Ripley, they kind of become little boys, and Damian Priest needs to rise up and be a man right now, and he needs to get away from them. And he's starting though with the Seth Rollins challenge. Great job there, challenging Seth Rollins, not being afraid, not ducking, makes him look strong. Fight on who's not hot, Chad Gable. Okay, okay, so we gotta go by the storyline. We can't go by off of the fact that we know, in reality, Chad has resigned. We know that Chad is pumped about what's coming out. But in storyline-wise, Chad has lost another Intercontinental match. He had to go to the back of the line. He got completely steamrolled by Braun Strowman. He loses the Elf Academy, and then he's straight up murdered by the Wyatt family. All right, well, the Wyatt Six. He's murdered by the Wyatt Six. This is very much like, okay, bye bye You didn't resign. We just wrote you off TV. And yeah, so storyline-wise, Chad Gable looks like he's done. I know he's not. He's probably going to come back stronger than ever with the Creed Brothers and reform Elf Academy stronger than ever. But as of right now, he is so cold, he's in a body bag. Literally a body bag because of the YS6. We got to go off what we see. Not what we know, what we see. I will do a bonus hot and a bonus cold. Bonus hot for the Wyatt family. Just talked about how they murdered Chad Gable. Well, they murdered everybody. Everybody backstage murdered, dead. <laughs> it was crazy. I do have my misgivings and I do want to be cautious with spooky stuff because I don't want to be embarrassed when I have people watch wrestling and I don't know whenever Undertaker used to shoot the lightning out of his fingers I'm like uh, well you see the reason why he can do that is you know I don't want to have those moments however if they just do creepy I'm okay with it and but the internet right now loving everything they just saw we had a QR code saying a massacre is going to happen at Cash of the Classle and then we had a massacre on Raw it ended Raw everybody's like holy crap best thing ever Mr. Sante Zappi even said it was the best thing since Nexus introduction and so you know who am I to argue with the internet I will tell you whether I have mixed feelings or not doesn't matter what does matter they are red hot super hot who is not the ring production crew at Clash of the Castle I don't know what was going on with those top ropes but Jay Cargill she botched and everybody was like well you know she's kind of new AEW that's understandable but then when Damian Priest botched, he could have killed himself. Something should have been done. And 
it's coming out now that people are saying that the ring ropes were too tight. And they're showing a picture of the referee showing AJ that the rope, something's wrong with them. And it's like, why didn't we stop this? I don't care if this would have taken an hour to fix. An hour to fix, you should stop. Their health and welfare is more important than anything. And Damian Priest could have seriously, seriously injured himself permanently and anybody else could have too but Damian Priest definitely the one that had it the worst in that moment and Jay Cargill had to probably suffer through the embarrassment of it it's just not cool not cool I don't know what happened but never let that happen again I don't care stop the pay-per-view because I don't want another Owen Hart situation yeah very different but not if we do not put their safety above the show must go on then then no I don't want to watch the show I just straight up don't want to watch the show fire somebody reprimand somebody Make sure it never happens again. But yeah, but that's the who's hot, who's not. What do you guys think? Do you have anybody that you think is hot and not? I do have a couple people to watch out for. Louis Kaiser, Jay Uso. But you know what? We'll see how they are after the next PLE. Comment below so you get a chance to win one of these belts. You comment on every new video. You get a chance to win. I'll contact you via email, Twitter, something. Smoke signal. We'll, we'll get in contact and I will give you a belt. I appreciate every single one of you. I acknowledge. Damian Priest, I acknowledge Bond Breaker, I acknowledge CM Punk and Drew McIntyre as the hottest people and the Wyatt Six right now as the hottest faction, the hottest everything in WWE. Just like I hope you acknowledge the subscribe button. You guys have a great and amazing day.